This is a concept video for face plane portraits. So face plane portraits, um, these are for two by two systems. So for two by two systems. <clears throat> and they're how we graph the solutions to the equation y prime equals a y, where y and y prime are vectors. So the way we graph it is on our axes, we have y1, so the first component of y. So if you remember, y is equal to components y1 and y2. So we put y1 on the x-axis and y2 on the y-axis. And um, y is a function of time. So each of the components are functions of time. So this gives us a parametric equation for y1 and y2. So as time goes on, we'll have y1 and y2 um, uh, executing some sort of motion. And that'll draw a curve for us. So this curve is called the phase plane portrait of our solution. So, um, we know A, the matrix, has four components. We call these components A11, A12, A21, and A22. And this has a characteristic polynomial associated with it, which is the determinant of A minus lambda i. And this ends up being lambda squared minus the trace of the matrix A times lambda plus the determinant of matrix A. So D is the determinant of A and T is the trace of A. So we have a few cases of <clears throat> uh, face plane portraits um, for the different types of solutions of the equation based on what the matrix is. Um, but all these involve the concept of equilibrium. So since this is a autonomous equation, um, we can see that <clears throat> um, that we have equilibrium points. Usually this equilibrium is going to be the origin, or y equals the zero vector, zero, zero. So, um, but in general, the equilibrium is where um, the equilibrium is at a vector v, where uh, a v equals zero. Um, so this is the null space of a. For most of these two by two systems, though, we will get a an equilibrium at the origin. So let's look at the different cases. Um, we have case one. So case one is when we have two distinct eigenvalues. So we'll call them E valves. That's uh, just an abbreviation for eigenvalues. And these eigenvalues have opposite signs. And the way we show this is we say lambda 1 is less than 0 and lambda 2 is greater than 0. Um, so these have an associated eigenvector um, that satisfies the equation a v1 equals lambda 1 v1. And for lambda 2, we have a v2 equals lambda 2 v2. So our general solution takes the form y of t equals c1 e to the lambda 1 t v1 plus c2 e to the lambda 2 t v2, where c1 and c2 are arbitrary constants. So as you can see, um, as t approaches infinity, um, since this is a negative exponential, this goes to zero. And this, since it's a positive exponential, will grow 
um, very rapidly. So this will dominate. So as you can see, solutions um, approach. Oh, sorry. They approach C two e to the lambda two t v two. So they approach some scalar multiple of v two. So um, then we can consider the other case where t goes to negative infinity, and when t goes to negative infinity, this part, um, since it's a negative exponential, um, this will dominate as it will get larger and larger as we get to uh, smaller values, and this will actually go to zero. So as we go backwards in time, we approach, or we can say solutions come from a scalar multiple c1 e to the lambda 1 t v1. So the way we can show that on our face plane portrait is the if we do an example of, let's say this is our eigenvector v1. This is our other eigenvector v2. Um, we can see that all the scalar multiples of v1 and v2 lie along this line. And then v2 is along this line. So we said all the solutions as we go forward in time approach v2, or scalar multiple of v2. So these arrows are going to point outwards along v2. And let me make these arrows look a little nicer. And then same in the opposite direction. And then our solutions are going to go away from B1. So that means that we'll go to 0 along V1. So Now if we look at our other solution curves, <clears throat> if we start near v1, we will go to v2. If we start on this side from v1, we'll also approach v2. And if we start on this side from v1, we'll approach v2. And if we start on this side from v1, we approach v2. So these solution curves generally don't overlap with each other. So we can draw as many as we want. But um, the first few we drew was sufficient enough as long as we get one in each region. And kind of draw the arrows to indicate what direction we're moving. So these are all solution curves. And these um, lines here, you have one here, one here, uh, one here, and one here. These are called half lines of the solution, and that's because they are half lines. And um, for this uh, case, we have two what we call stable half lines. and two unstable half lines. Um, and stable just means we're moving towards zero. And unstable means we're moving towards infinity. So 
these are the ones moving away from infinity, and these are the ones moving towards zero. And uh, just schematically stable. Um, if this is our equilibrium point, stable looks like this. And if this is our equilibrium point, uh, I probably should switch the colors. Unstable would look like this. If this is our equilibrium point, we're moving away. So this case is called a saddle equilibrium. That's because some parts are stable and some parts are unstable. And this um, shape is called a separatrix or separatrix. So now we move on to our next case. So case two, we again have two um, distinct real eigenvalues, but um, they're both negative. So we have lambda one, which is less than lambda two, which is less than zero. <clears throat> so our solution again looks like y of t equals c1 e to the lambda 1 t v1, or v1 is the associated eigenvector with lambda 1, and then we have c2 e to the lambda 2 t v2. If we first consider the case as t approaches infinity, since these are both negative eigenvalues, and this is more strongly negative, this will go to zero quicker. So that means that um, solutions will approach this, because um, once this part of the solution is gone, all that's left is a solution in the direction of V2. So we'll, um, this will go to zero slower. So solutions approach this. Our scalar multiple would need two to be more exact. Then go to zero. That looks kind of like this. This is V2. Then a solution well. And this is zero over here. And a solution well go tangent to v2 before going to zero. And um, likewise, if we go back in time, as t approaches um, zero, actually negative infinity, then these both go to infinity. But this goes to infinity uh, quicker because it's more strongly um, positive when we plug in negative values. So solutions become parallel to V1. So we can see that um, if we draw V1 and V2. This is V1 right here. And we extend that out. It's the span of V1. So, and if we draw V2 over here. I'm not going to draw the arrows just because we don't know what direction our solutions are going to go. If we extend that, we get the span of V2. And since all these solutions are going to approach zero, we'll draw arrows pointing into the origin. Um, and our other solutions, like we said, um, since our V1 component, if we start 
Um, we're going to start out parallel to V1. If we go back in time. And as we move in, we're going to approach V2. Because that V1 component dies down. And we eventually go to the origin. So we start out parallel to V1 out here. And we slowly become more parallel to V2. Likewise, that happens out in this region. And same in this region. And in this region. So this has um, four stable half lines. So, and we call this a nodal sink equilibrium. 